I am deeply honored today to welcome the Speaker of the Federal, Rep Federal House of Representatives, Right Honorable Tajuddin Abbas, PhD, honorable colleagues, and invited distinguished stakeholders to the inaugural session of the Special Committee on Crude Oil Theft and Losses. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish to express my profound appreciation to the Speaker and the leadership of the House for the wisdom in bringing the chairman of the relevant committees, particularly the committees oversighting the oil and gas sector, to work together in this assignment and address the issues of oil theft and losses comprehensively. The issue of crude, theft, crude oil theft is of significant national importance, and the House of Representatives has taken an important and bold step to check and tame the tide of this unfortunate development. Mr. Speaker, sir, a valuable record from NAITI report 2021 indicates that the oil and gas sector accounted for over 72.26% 7, of Nigeria's total export and government foreign exchange. Also 40.55% of government revenue and provided over 19,171 jobs despite the seemingly robust contribution of the oil and gas sector to our national economy. The country is yet to drive maximum benefits from its abundant hydrocarbon resources due to oil theft and losses through pipeline vandalization, five line vandalization, integrity issues, compromises, measure, measurement inaccuracies, outright sabotage and general insecurity in the oil producing communities. The issues of oil theft and pipeline vandalization are not, are not new to us, nor are they exclusive to Nigeria as a nation. However, they remain persistent threat to our economy, environment, and national security. The, the agency addressing these colleagues, the urgency of addressing these challenges and blustering our regulations, technology, and security measures can therefore not be overstated. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, oil theft is large-scale illegal business estimated to be worth 133 billion US dollars per year globally, which makes it the world's biggest theft of a natural resource and is also considered to be the number one most smuggled natural resources globally. From the Naiti report, it is estimated that between 2019 and 2021, Nigeria lost over 643 million barrels of crude oil, amounting to over 48 billion of US dollars as a result of theft. A recent report by the Presidential Investigative Panel affirms the apparent microeconomic impact of crude oil theft. The report states that with oil theft and illegal bunkering, taking as much as 200,000 to 400,000 barrels per day of the country's oil production at the onset of these illegalities, to now more than 800,000 barrels per day, the, country, the country's fiscal stability is therefore threatened. The report further painted a, bright, a brightening scenario where losses to oil thieves and official leakages could overtake official receipts of oil revenues into the Nigerian Treasury. Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, honorable colleagues, the challenges may appear enormous, but with the political will of the House leadership, led by the Speaker of the House, Right Honorable Abbas Tachiti, and this committee can summon, we can be able to summon them and write this tell us of who's to that of blossoming, pro blossoming prosperity. I'm aware of the various efforts of past leadership of the country to address the root and immediate causes of this malaise. These efforts have led to the establishment of various panels and committees which resulted to various outstanding recommendations. Consequently, the government came up with several programs, initiatives and legislations aimed at addressing issues raised by the various panels and committees. Such policies and initiatives have given rise to the 13% revenue oil production, revenue for oil producing communities, 
from the Consolidated Revenue of the Petro Region, the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, the Presidential Amnesty, the Nigeria Content Development and Monitoring Board, the Host Community Trust, etc., etc. It is therefore important to evaluate the efficiency of these government policies and programs and strengthen them where need be in order to address some of the identified causes of oil theft. It is also alleged that most of the recommendations arising from past efforts are stacked in shelves and left unattended to. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, members of the press, I am therefore optimistic that with the inauguration of this committee and with the support of the House leadership and House membership, we will dust off all those recommendations, re-evaluate re them in line with current realities and ensure and more we monitor the implementations of relevant ones in collaboration with relevant ministries, departments, and agencies of government. Finally, let me draw attention to a recent report by the Group Chief Executive Officer of NNPC Limited, Malam Kiari, Malam Kiari, stating that the company has not been able to pump oil through pipelines from Wari to Benin in the last 22 years and also that over 5,000 kilometers of oil pipelines in the country are not functional as a result of pipeline vandalization. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I want to also assure you and Nigerians that we will engage stakeholders in the entire hydrocarbon value chain so that together we will begin to roll back the evil effects of the criminal enterprise of oil theft and pipeline vandalization. Together, we will overcome and such, such reports of inability to put the nation's oil pipelines to effective use. Breaches at the flow stations, compromises at the loading and export terminals, dangers of non-decommissioning and abandoned oil wells will begin to recede. I therefore implore on the cooperation and support of every stakeholder in the oil and gas sector, the security sector, and indeed every Nigerian and other nationals residing and doing business in Nigeria, so that the committee delivers on the mandate given to us by the House. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, once again, I, on behalf of my colleagues, wish to thank Mr. Speaker for the opportunity given to us to serve our dear nation in this assignment. Thank you and God bless you.